nothing to do with that. This is how to tell which sensor is bank one, sensor one, and which one's banked one, bank two, sensor two, or bank one, sensor two, or all that kind of stuff. Typically on a two bank motor or a V motor, anything that's V8, V6, V4 even, um, uh, this is how this works. First of all, you have to determine which side of the motor or which part of the V is uh, bank one and which one's bank two. This is a V6. This is a little Toyota 3.4 liter or 3400. Uh, it's in a Toyota, Mr. T specifically. Say hi, Mr. T. <laughs> yeah, I'm cheesy. Deal with it. So on this motor, this is bank one and this is bank two. Now some of these cylinders, basically the way you determine it is whichever one has cylinder number one, like that's the ignition coil for cylinder number one right there. Um, that works out to be uh, bank one because it has cylinder one. Now some manufacturers, you know, there's three per side here, uh, three cylinders on this side and then three cylinders on this side and a total of six and you're feeding with the intake manifold six holes you got one two three four five six you'll notice that the configuration of the motor is a V you got one side sticking up here one side sticking up here you've got pistons that run down this way and pistons that run this way and so that's why we call it a V6 it's a V configuration there's six cylinders now the spark plug on this there's a uh, the second cylinder back on this crank, you go one uh, is over here, and then the second one is this one, and then the middle one is the third one on the crank, you know, just stacking in order of your uh, bearings and connecting rods and pistons. So, what does that have to do with bank one sensor one? Well, look at this one, it's the farthest one to the front. This whole cylinder head is slightly more to the front than this one is. Now, of course, I'm showing you the valve cover. Um, and I'm going to show you the spark plugs. This is a spark plug wire for the second cylinder back. You can tell that the cylinder up here is slightly in front of it. You can see where that green laser is. So this one is slightly in front of this one. The one that's the closest to the front where all of the belts are. And you may think, well, hey, my motor's mounted in sideways because i got a front wheel drive car. Well, deal with it. Wherever the belts are, the first cylinder after the belts, because this is the front of the motor, wherever the belts or the timing chain or whatever it is, you know, barring a Ford uh, Ranger 4 liter that has five timing chains on it, it's ridiculous. But the front, wherever the belts are, go to the first spark plug hole or wire or whatever, whichever one's the furthest to the front, that's bank number one. Now, moving on in the lesson, I'm going to go to the whiteboard. Let's go over here so I don't have to edit. You can puke if you need to. It's alright, I understand. So here's your motor, and we're looking at this from the top. So here's our block, and coming off the block you have exhaust pipes that go down like this, and down like this. And you'll have one cylinder head, in this case this cylinder head slightly forward, and then the next one is slightly back, like that. So this is the first one on the crank, second one on the crank, third, fourth, and fifth, and sixth. And some manufacturers do them like this, odds on one side, evens, and that, I like that. That makes all the sense in the world. Other manufacturers are like one, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you see a pattern here? One is always one. Six is always six. So anyway, that's how it is. Deal with it. I'm tired and cranky, so deal with it. <laughs> I'm going to still do the video because I've had this question so many times. I really like to help people, but sometimes it takes a lot more out of you some days than others. So this is a system where it has dual exhaust. And you'll have an air fuel sensor here. It'll go up to your wire harness. You'll have another one here. We used to just call everything oxygen sensors. Everything was. Now these are oxygen sensors on the back. You notice how there's four of them? Now this is bank one. And this is bank two. And these aren't corrupt money laundering institutions that create money out of nothing on the fractional reserve system. 
these are actually just saying uh, this is you know like the bank of a river or something like that so we have bank one bank two so we have one three five there's no musical chairs where somebody gets repossessed no matter what the system is and there's not enough money to pay back the loaned money and the interest this is something completely different so this is your catalytic converter and this is for a two cat system sometimes the pipes will come together and you'll have a one cat system and it's not a cat like a kitty cat you know there's no whiskers and a nose this is a catalytic converter it's a catalyst is not English funny English is the craziest language so anyway so sometimes you'll have a cat like this and if you have a six cylinder or a two bank motor you'll still have an oxygen sensor here and an oxygen sensor here it's getting messy um, hopefully you can follow it so for uh, this system you'll have an oxygen sensor in the back or maybe it'll be in the side of the head of the cat um, but long story short this would be bank one sensor one this would be bank two sensor one because it's the first cylinder or first sensor in the exhaust system this would be uh, bank uh, one sensor two this would be bank one sensor two and this would be bank two sensor two so that's how that works so for simplicity I'm gonna get ri rid of uh, Mr. Meow here in the middle and we're gonna deal with just the standard kind of thing now these two sensors at the bottom that are after the cat are babysitter sensors and you only find this after or years greater than 1996 when we went to OBD2 OBD2 is Star Wars he's talking about Star Wars now what the heck no this is onboard diagnostic second generation this is one of the best things that our federal government has done in terms of regulation and red tape they did it right on this and the reason why is because uh, with this setup with this configuration your car uh, diagnoses itself on board diagnostics second generation so that what this does is basically you know you've got your check engine light and uh, it comes on if something in your car is wrong if this isn't working if that's any of these sensors aren't working it'll make your check engine light come on when that light comes on there'll be an associated code it'll be P for powertrain and then for numbers most of them will be like a P0301 that's a misfire on cylinder number one or like with these if this is reading that this is bad and this is out to lunch it'll say P0420 which means catalyst efficiency below threshold and so you can have a bad sensor you know I'll say heater circuit failure these have heaters on them they only work they only sense the oxygen in the exhaust pipe which means unburned fuel or unburned stuff um, they only sense it when they're warmed up so they'll have two wires out of four you know that'll be for a heater and then the other two are for you know sensing or you have a single wire sensor if it's older you know so anyway cars are getting so efficient and so clean and so wonderful and a lot of that's due in part to this if your catalytic converters burned up because you had this code and you never did anything about it and you had all that raw fuel all those raw hydrocarbons um, going out through here then this guy's gonna have to be working overtime hydrocarbons when they're introduced and go down here the HC's which is basically what gasoline is is it's a hydrocarbon when it goes through here it hits this and it just lights it right up on fire burns it at about 600 degrees um, sometimes hotter sometimes you get a really nasty rotten egg smell because you got too many hydrocarbons your cat burns up and uh, so that's that so when that happens in this sense is O2 or oxygen because if there's any oxygen in the system it should burn with whatever else is available so if it senses that then that says aha something is wrong here exclamation point and sends a signal back to the computer saying that the cat's bad now this sensor is an air fuel sensor or air fuel meter and it just helps the computer to know how much fuel to inject in the engine most everything by 96 was fuel injected by you know because it needed to be to pass emissions and be able to have a whole system work that's why carburetors went the way of the earth um, so anyway that's how it works out what is this one this is bank 2 sensor 1 bank 2 sensor 2 
bank one, sensor one, bank one, sensor two. So that's how that all works out. And I know it looks a little messy, but I'm trying to do the best that I can for you here to answer these questions. So yeah, if you have a misfire, your spark plug's not burning. Say you got, uh, so let's stay with cylinder number one. Th uh, 301 means that this one's not working. So it's usually an ignition problem. Sometimes it's compression, sometimes it's fuel injection, whatever. So you have the hydrocarbons going through the system and this is picking it up it says too many hydrocarbons less fuel so then you go lean and then next thing you go you got a p0171 or something saying that you're lean on bank one or you know if it's on this side you know p0172 you know too lean over there so it leans it out and then you get misfires from being too lean even more and so then things really aren't burning all you got is raw gas going out this one burns out the catalytic converter, covers it with black carbon because it's got too much hydrocarbons, the hydrogen's gonna burn, the carbon's gonna deposit, and it makes your cat gross. You wash it out sometimes if that's the failure. But this sensor on a 96 and newer vehicle is gonna say, hey, we are got raw nasty hydrocarbons going out into the environment and creating all kinds of havoc and making people stutter and get lung cancer and you know, you know, making them look like dumb Americans. They can't think clearly because they're breathing all this crap. And they're brushing their teeth with fluoride. And they're doing all kinds of stuff that's just bad for them. Read the warning labels on fluoride before you decide you want to buy fluoride. Tom's of Maine toothpaste. Buy it. It'll help. I promise. And you can get the non-fluoride fluoride stuff. For little kids, it's good for their teeth. But after that, it has no health benefit. It's only detrimental. Just so you know. So here's all this. I like to know everything about everything as you make better decisions that way. But anyway, now you know. So if your thing says B1 sensor 1 or B2 sensor 2, where is this? I'm going to drill you now. Just think about it. Which sensor is that? Bank 2, sensor 2. That's right. You guys are so smart. I love my subscribers. They're amazing. So anyway, that's how that goes, and I'm just going to shut up now. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, or search for your same question in the comments below, and that way I don't get asked the same thing over and over again like I do in the personal messages, which I don't answer. I love you guys, or I wouldn't do this. It's not easy, um, but I like helping people. It's good karma. It, you know, you can complain about the problems in the world, or you can do something about it, right? Right what we're doing here so thanks love you guys